So if you're looking for somewhere to actually develop fully remotely on the cloud using a really powerful virtual machines and really powerful computers with superpowers with a lot of like huge stuff and really awesome features from GitHub and completely actually ditch VS Code in favor of that, well, code spaces are the actual answer. So code spaces are a really awesome way to basically run a virtual machine on the cloud hosted by GitHub itself, and it can give you access to literally everything. And what makes this really super powerful, it can actually give you VS Code right into your browser. So you don't need to have access to an actual computer or something, or you may have a really low budget computer that you can do on it, maybe a Chromebook. Why not? So it's all actually very powerful. It can give you that through the browser, or maybe you can run this on your local desktop installation of VS Code. So in this video, we will go and explore code spaces from GitHub. Is it really worth it? And also going to see how to create and how to manage a code space in the easiest way. Plus, is it worth to switch from like VS Code and completely ditch VS Code in favor of this new awesome shiny code spaces from GitHub? We're also going to go ahead and try to run a full stack React application on actual code space with like Node.js with a MySQL and database setup and everything. And we're going to see how that actually works. So after finally like receiving and getting off the wait list, and I got this really awesome email from the GitHub team saying, Oh, welcome to code spaces. And I can finally go ahead and access code spaces and try like, you know, get started with this and, and, and try it out. Right now, it's still in the beta, of course, because we all know it just has been released for a limited set of people and there is a wait list and, and everything only for enterprises and everything. So I was so lucky to get that. And, and yeah, luckily for me, I was able to get that like a couple of days ago, and I started actually going and digging deeper on how code spaces actually work. And does it worth the hype? So if I head over to my GitHub right over here, I'm going to find like a new section on my account, like your, your code spaces. So once you click on that, you're going to find like the already running and created code spaces. So code spaces are like, you know, like just virtual machines, if you're familiar with VMs. So you can imagine VMs like an operating system or just like a regular computer computer that literally that is actually like sometimes running and sometimes stops, right? So you can run that VM, you can stop it, you can, you can do plenty of stuff with it, you can delete it, you can recreate it or rebuild that, and, and so on and so forth. So for now, we're, I got this particular VM from from this one in here, which we're going to be testing throughout the video tutorial in here, like which is a full react application plus a backend running on Node.js and Nest.js. Um, so this is actually currently running. And this one has been like it last used 18 hours ago, but this one is, is not running, right? So VMs are gets like stopped automatically after a set of months. Yeah. And this is where you find all your like code spaces if you ever run those and it's actually being ordered and actually filtered by particular repository, which makes it super cool. And that leaves it like it gives it a little bit of room that you can run different kind of virtual machines or different code spaces for a single repository. Awesome. And, and now how to get get started with a code space, you can click on that and you can go in and select repository and everything. Or the other best option awesome way to do this is actually you can jump to a repository. For example, you can jump to this my repository in here, which is as I said before, it's a full react application plus a backend running on Nest.js and, and, and like Node.js with MySQL and Nginx. It's like a fully fleshed react application or fully fleshed web application particularly. And I'm going to just go ahead and test this application and see if it's actually going to work on this dev environment and how good or bad it is. And, and then like the actual development experience. And what I really love like about this actually it's very very easy to go ahead and set up a code space so once you choose code in here you're going to find local or code spaces and you can create a, on another code space in here or you can configure that but for me i got a single code space it gives you like this really random awesome name from github and it tells you which branch it is and tells you like what are the updates like the push and pulls for that particular repository it's, it's going to just basically act as a regular clone so if you were just to clone this particular repository locally like a VS code to run it, well, you can do it in that way. But here it, it can just go ahead and like act as a separate clone, the same way as you were cloning it locally. So if you select create a code space, you're going to find a four core CPU, eight gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage in here, which is pretty decent. And this is like a very basic tire in here. I'm not I'm not having access to the fullest tire, but they says that you can have access to a 32 core or GPU machines. And and as soon as I like I hear GPU machines, I'm, I'm super stoked, because this will allow you to do machine learning right into GitHub using code spaces with a really small amount of money that you can do. And, and this is just incredible, because I've been struggling to do machine learning in the past uh, couple of years. And it's 
it's so much fun just go ahead and do it on github new with code spaces and so much powerful vms that you can put your code on all right so here i'm going to choose configure this i'm going to go and click configure and this will take us to a completely different page in here which i will be able to like select a branch you can choose different places or regions where you want to run this i'm just going to leave it by default there and um, yes, here you can select as I said before. So let's try to go ahead and create a code space. And so as soon as we click on that, this will go go ahead and open up another URL. And as you see, it's now like github.dev. So this is very promising, right? And I can go ahead and zoom in. So image found container builds. Okay, so you can you can open up this in VS Code. I'm gonna show you this little on, but for now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run it on the browser because we want to experience both and we want to first test it on the browser. Like, does it worth or is it really that good to use VS Code in right in the browser? And I'm gonna just gonna compare it to using this or open this particular container and connecting into it from an actual VS Code, you know, local VS Code installation. And there you go. So once it's fully loaded, it may take some time time to actually fully load because this is actually like a VS code, like a separate VS code installation on the cloud. And it may take some time to fully install everything. So what I really like about this one is actually it's fully integrated that it allows you or it will install and configure VS code as you were having it locally. How? Because you've got v like you've got GitHub in here and everything is actually installed. I don't know why this is not opening, but it's going to like connect throughout your GitHub account and it's going to sync all the extensions or the configurations or the all the themes as you say, I already got my theme in here, which is mind blowing. So I got my extensions even further like that. This is this is already installed. And if you take a look on different extensions, you're going to have that installed as well. And you're going to have like accounts, um, you can go, you know, to different extensions, you can look at it, and you can access react applications and the different folders. But sometimes I said before, it may take a little bit of time to just go ahead and load because this is this is like a fully kind of like a VS code version. And it depends on your internet connection. So make sure to have a really reliable and not like a volatile kind of like internet connection. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of troubles and a lot of disconnects and reconnects. And if you're wondering, like, does this particular virtual machine will be destroyed or will be like your changes will be gone once once you close this? It's really not that case at all. Because once you close the virtual machine, it's just gonna stop and hibernate, right? It's just gonna like stop running, but it's not gonna like delete all the files or all the changes or all the configuration you put in here. So anything you install any extension you install any any changes you put into that VS code like for that particular browser, literally any change in here will be preserved and will be saved. So let's try for example, to go ahead and head over to react cars app and the other thing I didn't tell you what I really like about this is actually the terminal because it's it's kind of like gives you a full SSH access to the actual terminal and you can have like full control over the uh, the actual virtual machine in here run any particular command and this is very very promising. So for example, I can go in and run yarn install because there is nothing installed in there yet. And I can go ahead and do like yarn install and it should be not taking very long because it has a pretty reliable and very fast internet connection. So once everything is installed now I can go in and do yarn start to start the development server and this is going to start like a development server and remember this is just our react application i'm going well, you know, pop ups, I'm going to enable pop ups for this website, and you will even actually go ahead and like start or open up a new tab for you. So it's just going to gives you the full fledged experience as you were doing this locally. But instead, this is everything in a virtual machine in a code space. And there you go, this is our website and everything is really like running as we expect it to be. And this looks this is looking absolutely amazing. And if you're wondering about changes and everything. So if you change anything, for example, if you head over to the up dot time script in here, uh, maybe I can go ahead into the home page index. And let's say for example, I want to go ahead and like completely remove the like the navigation bar in here or something. So I'm going to go and control S you see, as soon as I control S, it's going to rebuild everything. If I head over back here, there's no navigation bar, it's it is going to like do HMR as well. It's going to do hot reloading and it works perfectly. And it's all actually being put in the browser you see, with this really ugly kind of really long, um, you know, URL in here like a github preview.dev. But 
this is all working fine and, and it works like, you know, as charming as it would be. So now if we try to actually open up one of these code spaces in a local VS Code desktop application in here without like running on the browser, but you know, our local installation of VS Code. Well, there you go. So this is this is what it looks like when you actually open it up, it's going to go ahead and set up the connection of code space. So you're going to have this really awesome pop up in here and like a progress bar telling you, you know, how fast this is going and it's actually open up remote. So you need to, you know, give it a couple of like seconds to minutes depending on your image on your like dependencies you've got on that particular code space or virtual machine. And like depending on the whole dependencies because it would try to install those and start and everything. So you know how it goes. And there you go. So it didn't take that long. I, I probably took like some somewhere between like a minute or two to actually set up everything. And, and there you go. It's actually a lot better. It just gives you like 100% better experience right than writing it in the browser because there are some glitches and still in beta for like the browser and sometimes it doesn't fetch. And sometimes it hangs out sometimes it disconnects. But for this one, it works flawlessly. It does like it works pretty perfectly. Uh, you have no problems with connections and it works really well, you don't have to wait that much of time. So for example, when opening up a folder, it's just going to open up the folder for you straight away. So it's like you're doing this locally, but instead, it's running on a code space. So now what I really actually test on this code space is actually running a full stack rock application. So I got an SGS create cars application in here and Node.js running NestJS application with MySQL and it got a react application as we saw before. So I'm trying to run both of these and I'm going to go ahead and try and like to run an actual MySQL using Docker. So Docker is actually installed on code spaces by the default. Like if you if you use the default like dev container configuration, I'm going to talk about the dev container configuration in a second. So if you use the default one, which is like whenever you open it, you're going to have the default most of the time, you don't have like to change it or something, you're going to have Docker, you're going to have many tools installed like NVM for managing different node versions, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to use Docker in here to go ahead and grab MySQL and actually, you know, you know go, go ahead and like a set up a password or something and try to run this. So as soon as I click on this, just go ahead and like and do uh, not going to find this locally, of course, but it's going to go ahead and pull this from the repository. And there you go, that should be done. If you so if I do Docker PS, I'm going to find MySQL currently running, which is amazing. Um, the next thing I want to do is actually use NVM to, you know, list the currently used version and the current node version that is currently installed is actually 16, which is the LTS version. But my project in here needs to run on version 14. So how I do that is going to use an NVM to install uh, version 14, which is pretty quickly is going to go in and do that for us grab the checksum and you know, do all the magic he needs to be doing. And there you go, we got node 14 already installed and you're going to set this by default uh, with NVM. NVM. So really awesome. I really like this. And the other thing I, I totally forgot about binding the particular port in here from the Docker run for my SQL. So I'm just going to go ahead and redo that real quickly. And that should be good to go. So now as can see, VS Code actually prompts us and tells us, Oh, there is an open port, do you want to make this public? Or do you want to access through the browser? I don't care about this. And if you look into the open ports, there is the 3306, there's the 3000 port, which is running our like local react application, there's the other bunch of ports in here, you don't need to know about it, because it's, it's basically related to the how VS Code executes and connects to the code spaces. So what we care about is actually the 3306, which is the MySQL port that allows us to connect through. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and run that again. So I'm going to do yarn start dev and this should go ahead and connect successfully with no problems. And there you go. So now we got our server running and it's clearly so got like another port exposed in here because there's another server, whatever. And there's a nest application already installed or started successfully, the database has been connected successfully. Hallelujah. And as a quick, awesome experiment here, I tried to add some data to the database using a GraphQL interface in here. And this actually added it to the actual server. Okay, so if I jump back to the actual react application and go ahead, like refresh, I'm going to be able to access the server and see it's being fetching the actual data in real time. And this is like the new cars I added to the database. And now it's being connected to the database connecting to the API and getting all the data being able to save and create and all of that sort of stuff, which is like I'm mind blowing to have all of those using code spaces. And plus you have the ports like 3000 and 9000. Like if you were locally developing, but no, you are using a code space and it's completely like remote, but you still having this to, you know, be able to connect to this 
through a local VS Code desktop installation. And the last thing I want to like cover up about the code spaces in here and what I noticed that is very, very kind of like advanced and very powerful is the dev containers. So dev containers are like a configuration that you can put in your code spaces to customize it however you want. So if you head over inside, inside of containers, you're going to find a different set of configuration and templates and everything like TypeScript node in here, which is just this particular folder that is called the dot dev container. And inside of it, you can find different stuff like the Docker file that's I'm going to use to build your virtual machines image and maybe like a dev container JSON that, you know, is going to have all the configuration from installing different extensions to choosing a particular node version in here and choosing the Docker file and so much more. I've been going through the reference for this particular like uh, the JSON file here, the dev container JSON file. It's it's actually amazing. It has so much stuff and you can you can do a lot of advanced stuff with this and you can create really complicated like architectures or like really complicated images from this particular point in here.